Okay, all right, we're here. We're a little bit early, as you can see. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to press that, but we're searching, we're searching. Obo should be a minute or two, I think. He's usually a pretty prompt guy, and he said just give him a sec, so I don't think it'll be too long. Um, you can see the six we're bringing on the screen. Shout out to Eric for the prep. We basically just decided to run it back. Like, the first game um, didn't go too badly in the actual season. Like, my matchup is horrible. Um, I'll just drop a good look, have fun, because he's ready now too. The The matchup is pretty horrible. Like, I just... I can't really switch in on Sneasel. Um, but... We, we try, me and Eric just kind of changed a few things, so... Um, we've got like a very aggressive lead with uh, with Giraffe Rig or Raging Boner, as Eric likes to call it. And he's been waiting all season for me to slip up and call it Raging Boner in one of my videos. And I haven't until now. But I don't think that counts because I intentionally said Raging Boner. So you can't count that, Eric. Um, so you have a very aggressive Raging Boner lead, which is a strange sentence to say. Um, and then we have... Uh, I've added the fish to the team because I like the fish a lot more now. Uh, so his team looks... He's just changed one thing too, right? He's added the the weeds in place of... Um, I can't remember. <laughs> My memory's bad. I don't know. He's, he's added the weeds instead of something. Probably something that didn't do that much and that's why he took it off. Uh, so this is Urshfu Rapid Strike, isn't it? No, Wicked Blow. Urshfu Wicked Blow. So single strike. Uh, Landorus, Sneasel, but not Stretchy Sneasel, we already fought that. Volcarona, Q Addison Noises, Jirachi, and then fuck, what's, what, what am I calling the Bramble? Phantump. <laughs> Phantump. <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with me. Okay, um... The Bramble's actually super annoying, sorry, Phantom's actually super annoying for Scarf Zerud. Um... But that's okay. We'll figure that out. Well, he can't strength sap me. He'd have to synthesis. Yeah, there's ways around it. It is annoying though. Ah, oh, Rotom, that's what he took off. Which was fair because it really struggled with the giraffe rig last time out. Okay, am I recording? Yes. Um, I, uh, so I'm recording this the same day that I posted the final week of Egg uh, of the regular season where I post it. So if you remember from last week, those of you that watched the, the post -com, where I'd been really ill, and I still was kind of ill, and, and actually, I post that earlier today. So I literally went up the same day that um, that I that I recorded it. And the same day I'm doing this. Um, yeah, so he does lead off with this again. Which might just mean he wants to um, T-Spike, but if he does T-Spike, I'm going to get a lot of damage off on him now, depending on his uh, spread, so. Let's just start by doing that. Let's just start by T-Bowing. And getting off to, hopefully, an advantageous start. Um, and it was kind of interesting. So, so okay, so, oh, the U-turn actually is really bad. Please don't go hard Landorus on a potential Draco Meteor. Please do not go Hardlander. So basically, this was EV'd to always live an adamant earthquake from non-boosting item Landorus, I think. Like non-ban, non-life orb. I'd always live one. The idea being, if he led off with Landorus, I could just Draco into it. This isn't Landorus, I'm pretty... Oh, it is. Bro... Now I don't know if I take one. You know, the best laid plans and all that. Eric, look what your raging bone has done. <laughs> look how much trouble your raging bone has got, got us into. This wasn't supposed to happen. You never told me about this. This wasn't what, what we agreed on. You were supposed to let something die here. Ah, uh, let me see. If he's Adam and Earthquake. Oh my, a 359? He's guaranteed to kill me. If he's jolly, it's a 50-50 shot to kill me if he's jolly. <laughs> fuck it! Oh, fuck it. What have we got? Earth power. I should live that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good damage. So he's AV, right? 
yeah, he's AV. Yeah, he's AV. Okay, that's good damage then. So he got Earth Power again. Do I just go into this? I kind of want this for Volcarona. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Tet. We're going to Tet. That's good damage. We'll take that good damage. At least we've got something out of our booster. We can keep this around. Potential sack fodder with Girafrig. Um, and he might U-turn. He might U-turn, but I don't think Turtonator lets in anything. I mean, I guess the, the Volcarona comes in again. But we can play around that. Um, at least we got some, some mileage out of this. It could have gone worse. It could have gone better. It could have gone a lot better. But it could have gone worse. I'm surprised he went into this if he's special, especially. Because if I'd calm minded, I would have. Yeah, yeah, so he does use him. I kind of wish I had uh, just trade code again or something. But then I guess, like, Ratchi just comes in and just eats it. So it doesn't really put us in that great of a spot. I guess Ratchi can come in here and he can U turn. Um, or he could Ice Punch. That would be not ideal. Anyway, I started saying, and then I got distracted by this silly game that I'm supposed to be playing. Uh, that I uploaded my, my postcom today. And I nearly didn't. I nearly didn't upload the postcom the way that you saw it, which was, let's be honest, it was chaos. It, 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 the Pokemon was barely a feature in the video. I was just, I don't know, waffling on about whatever, and uh, I nearly didn't upload it because I just, I didn't know if it was good or not. I was like, I was so unfocused. I was so, you know, all over the shop that I was like, maybe people just won't enjoy this. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So this thing comes out. It should be like Ice Punch or U-Turn, right? I don't want to let everything get worn down is my issue here. This is supposed to be my check to... <sighs> to the Volcarona, which is a really hard thing for me to deal with otherwise. This is supposed to be my check to Sneasel, which is a hard thing for me to deal with otherwise. Oh, I guess this is the time to bring you in, and if I can take an Ice Punch, then potentially I can Thunderclap afterwards. This could just be Stealth Rocks, um, in which case I might be able to get one more big hit off on something. Okay, Iron Heads. We will take that. Uh, I think I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. Because I could see him going for like Stealth Rocks here. He could go into Lando again. But because I could see him going for the Stealth Rocks as well. Yeah, because he's a salt vest on Lando. So if he's got a rocker, this is the rocker. I think this is okay. I think this is okay. If he goes Lando, like, it's not the end of the world. Yes, yeah, so we just psychics. Uh, I think we might lift this. Nah, we were too low. A crit, anyway. I think we were too low, anyway. I think we were too low, anyway. I, I could Because it was a crit, I can't find any intel out. Or if he's, like, a bulkier set or whatever, there's nothing I can really learn from that. But that's okay. So we want to go into this and try and wall break a little bit, for sure. Anyway, I keep getting distracted, so I wasn't going to upload that 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 video with the postcom, but the response to it has actually been like, has been really positive. Like, uh, I had Eric message me being like, "This might be my favorite draft league video you've ever uploaded." Like, I I absolutely loved it. Um, he he never goes into the grass thing, right? No, you never no go into the grass thing. If you go into anything. I think you really struggle to go into anything. I think I'm just gonna surf. Like I want, yeah, because I don't want to try and make the read of of Sneasel or um, of Urshifu. Sorry, I don't want to let in Sneasel or Urshifu for free by Shadow Balling. And I just don't think because this is such a Telegraph Shadow Ball, I don't think you're ever going to Phantom. I think he probably just stays in. Okay, I, I don't know what I'm talking about apparently. Um, Sacks the Lando. That was the other thing. Or he could just sack the Lando. And he does just sack the Lando. Which makes sense. Which is kind of sucks in a way. Because it means I can't try and cheekily get my Defiant boost later in the game. But it's important that we get some KOs. So that's something. Let's see. What does he go into to revenge kill? Okay, this thing. That makes sense. Uh, right. Yeah, I think we use this pivot first, keep the enamorous as healthy as possible. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, 
But everyone seemed to love it. Like I had one comment saying, you know, this is this is my favorite draft league video of all time. Someone else saying, uh, I think it was Oliver saying, like this is this is why I subscribe to this channel for. Eric actually messaged me being like, this is I think my favorite draft league battle you've ever uploaded or draft league video. Of course, there's an element of hyperbole to all of this. You know, people who just watched it, they've enjoyed it. But but like the fact that you guys were enjoying it, the fact that you guys were enjoying me just waffling on about eating Tornadus's breasts and uh, I I don't know being a poodle of some description. Um, I was like, huh, I didn't think people would enjoy this. I, did, I didn't think people would, would enjoy this video. I thought that they're just thinking, ah, oh, he's not even paying attention to the Pokemon, you know. And it got me thinking about, like, the way that we kind of value things. And I think the thing is, that video was, like, super low effort, right? I've literally, I've already played the game. I was ill, so the game itself was effort. But I just, rec all I did was sat down this morning hit start record, bring up the footage of the game, and commentate over it. I wasn't like, you know, doing hours of like prep for it or looking back turn by turn to make sure that I was giving you a full analysis or I wasn't really digging into whatever. What I was doing was just what comes naturally, just chatting absolute shit, um, just, yeah, just being a, a moron. And it was kind of fun I think I can stay in on this, and, and knocking it off does seem really good. I think I'm just going to do that. I think I'm just going to knock it off. Okay, yes, we see the pods guys come out. But this shouldn't do very much, right? Yeah, it doesn't do very much at all. And he's actually life orb. So getting... I'll take that all day. That is excellent. All day. 20%, 30% on this for that. Yeah, you can have you can have that. That's fine. Love that. I now need to play the Turtonator a bit more carefully to make sure I don't get swept by like Scarf, Urshifu Endgame. But Phantom gone is nice. That is is nice. Um, yeah. But, sorry. So I was thinking about the way we value things, and it's it's been something that's been on my mind a lot recently with my PhD. Um, the way we value things in terms of like. Hard work equals quality, right? In our society, I, I'm like, I'll be honest, I'm not this fucking like uber like communist guy that fully understands all this stuff. But like in a, in a capitalist society, right, where you want your workers to work hard and work well to generate profits for your business, like very reductive take, I know. But like, you know what I'm getting at, the way the world kind of works, the way our culture here in, in England and, and I assume America, at least I don't know about non-English speaking countries, but it's kind of similar, right? The way that we that we want people to think is that the harder you work, the more valuable something is. So if I upload a video where I'm like, it's it's like low effort in terms of I didn't you know, I didn't spend hours and hours on it. I didn't whatever. It feels like that's not allowed. It feels like I have somehow. Um, I'm just gonna bolt switch. I think <sighs> this might be a misplay. This might be a misplay, but I, I think it's okay. Because it, uh, he could just go Jirachi so easily. Because it screams Colba Berry. So I'm going to bank on him reading the Colba Berry, and I'm going to try and keep my momentum. Um, yeah, the way that we value things, or the way I value things at least, I, I'm, let me not speak for everyone, because I don't know how everyone feels. God, Sneasel is so small. Uh, the way I, I value things is like, if I didn't work hard for this, then I don't want it. Um, so for example, with my PhD, like, I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. I'm having to extend, which sucks. Like, it's taking me longer than I thought it would. Um, but, man, if I had Focus Blasted, ooh, that would have been nice. Um, I'm having to extend, but I'm doing okay. And... The problem is... I feel like with my PhD, unless I really work for it, this is just become a therapy session now, uh, unless I really work for it, I feel like it has no value. I feel like the reason I did a PhD was, you know, to really get stuck into academia and prove that I could do it. And so if I don't do that, uh, do I do I bother stealth rocking? The chip is really nice. Or do I just body press? Because I think I'm going to stealth rock. He has two rock weaknesses in the back. I think it's worth um, knock off also would have been really good actually. Knock knock off maybe would have been better. Uh, I like the stealth rock play. I think it's okay. 
Yeah, so anyway, uh, with my PhD, I've just been feeling like if I don't put in, you know, if I don't work eight hours a day, Monday to Friday, every single day for four years, then it, it, it doesn't have value. And one of the issues that I've had in my PhD is that there are like types of writing and stuff. For those of you that don't know, I'm doing like a creative writing slash English PhD. Writing's the career I want to go into. And there are types of writing that come more easily to me and types of writing that come more difficult to me. I kind of need the health on everything now. This is a little bit scary at this point, actually. Um, this drawer, I think it has to be you. Do I risk getting swept by agility moth? Probably you could take one, but you can't do a lot back. Oh, I think I risk getting swept by Agility Moth, so I think I have to leave this thing in, actually. Um, that's fine. I think I, I think I need the free switch. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think I need the free switch. Um, so, because, yeah, imagine if you spadef drop me there into then like an energy ball or something, uh, Moth would have become a real problem. So I, I think I've made the right play there. Um, this time I am just going to Shadow Ball, I think, because I think he probably stays in. Um, and if not, like rocks are up, things are getting chipped down pretty heavily now. Um, so yeah, so I think my, my uh, there's different types of writing that I'm kind of doing for my PhD, and, and I'm valuing the ones where they'd come difficult to me. So. For example, like to give a very simplified example, if I were to write something more like poetic, more like like a poem or something, um, that comes much more more naturally to me. Things that are experimental, things that are a little bit weird. This this probably doesn't surprise you if you're a regular viewer around here. But things that are a bit weird, a little bit um, yeah, experimental and out of the box, or creative. And I really don't like that word to be honest with you. Um, when when people describe themselves as creatives, no offense to anyone that does, but I always think well. I think all of us can be creative. It's a lot of the time it's those of us that had the encouragement as children to do it that then label ourselves creatives, or those of us that rebelled against our parents and said we couldn't do it that label ourselves creatives. And in reality, any one of us could be creative. It's just some of us are, are, are more nervous about it or hold ourselves back more or whatever. Do you think Art Project kills? Ah. Um, but anyway, yeah, the more quote unquote creative, I guess. Um, type of writing comes more easily to me the the more like academic strict focused no surprise if you're watching this video strict focus i think this kills um disciplined writing that comes a lot harder to me i'm not someone who's very mentally disciplined as you can tell i have fucking adhd like it's in my genetics i, I i'm not mentally disciplined um but i value that more i want to write that kind of writing more because it's harder and so I, I, and I noticed with my video, a lot of the time the videos that I upload that I think you guys won't like end up getting more likes or more positive comments, at least from a subsection of you that watch. And it's like this thing of, of like, but that's not what the, the big YouTubers that I watch do. They're not doing that. You know, they're, they're, they're doing this kind of video with heavy editing and, and really good content. And I want to do that. But then like, maybe there's something to be said for like, I don't want this to sound egotistical, so I'm, I'm trying to think how to word this exactly. Um, because it's something that I have mixed feelings about, so it's really not an egotistical thing, to be honest. But um, th there's maybe something to be said for the fact of, like, playing to your strengths, whatever they may be, like, is okay. You know? It, Lionel Messi, right? He's an example that I think anyone even don't doesn't watch football can understand. Lionel Messi, footballing genius, right? I'm sure he's trained fucking hard his whole life. But I've played football long enough to know that there are people that are just naturally gifted at the sport. Talent does exist, whatever people may tell you, 100%. Me and my brother, we're blood related. My younger brother, I've probably played more hours of football than he ever has. I love the game so much more than he ever will. He's much better than me. He will always be much better than me. It's not that he hasn't worked hard. It's just that he was born better than me. He just was, like, just God-given talent. His, his coordination... His brain for the game is just better than mine, and, and that's life. And, and I'll never catch him, despite being nine years older than him or whatever I am. And Messi's the same, right? No one said to Messi, look, man, I know you're really good at this football thing, and I'm not comparing myself to him in, in, any, in anything I do, but I know you're really good at this football thing, 
Do you think rugby would be harder for you? You know, you're a little lad. You're only like five five. Don't you think like? Well, what about if you were like front row in rugby? What about if you, you know, in the scrum? I don't know much about rugby, but so excuse me in my terminology. But what, what if you were there? Or well, you thought about tennis. You know, you don't really have a great reach, so it would be really good if you could become a pro tennis player. And it'd be like, why? Like, if you're good at this thing and you're and it comes easy to you or, or easier to you and it comes naturally to you and you're, you're, it's one of your strengths, why, as a society? He might just knock off here, but I think I'll take two, so I think it's okay. Why as a society do we value the harder path? And why have I, personally, maybe you're not the same, why have I internalised that so much? Why do I... Sorry, it's really, really stupid thoughts, probably, over a fucking Pokemon video that I uploaded, but it just really got me thinking today, because... It felt like a microcosm of what's going on in my wider life. Where to, and if you're if you're watching 20 minutes into the video, I will share this with you now. It's just something that I, it's important to talk about these things, but I don't like to share too much because I don't want anyone to worry, and you really don't need to worry. But mentally, I, I have struggled for the last six months or so. I, I have been in a bit of a not a dark place, just a bit of a down place, particularly self-esteem wise and and how I feel about myself. Not been feeling great, um, and like I say, I don't, I don't need lots of people commenting and and, and, and saying, you know, I hope you're okay and stuff. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm fine. I'll be fine. But I do think it's important to talk about these things. We, we all go through these these periods in life, and there's no shame in that. And and I absolutely have, um, and have been recently. And I thought, but I'm kind of self-inflicting this because I'm constantly, if I do something good, but I didn't have to fight for it tooth and nail, then it wasn't worth having. It wasn't good. It was just. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Does anybody else Does anybody else ever feel this way and ever feel like they almost... I don't want to say self-sabotage because that feels very strong. But um, I am going to tack you on Cutter, even though it lets the moth in. Because, yeah, I think he just stays. Oh, we don't live it. We don't live it, which is a real shame. So do, does that reveal that he's choiced? I should have calped that. Um... Either way, I think we can go into this in U-turn. The worst case scenario is that he is Scarf. Yes. Because, but then I just need to be able to check Scarf, Icicle, whatever. I think he's probably Banded. I think Banded makes more sense against my team. In which case, we will either Revenge kill him now, we'll force him out, let's take another round of rocks, or we'll bait in the Moth, we'll force that out, and we'll get in bas uh, Basculin for a KO. So I think any of these situations are fine. But yeah, just comment down below. I'm just curious if anybody else ever does this thing where they don't value their wins if they don't feel like they really work for them. And actually, I was, I was talking to uh, Nico about this when he was staying with me about Pokemon Draft League. And like, or maybe it was Eric. One of the two recently. We were saying that... the Maybe it was Eric, I think. We were saying the leagues you win... Oh, maybe it was Nico. It doesn't matter. The leagues you win are often the ones that you care less about. The ones that you put less effort in seem to be the ones you win. And and maybe that's because, you know, when you really care and you get uptight and you, you choke, you make bad plays, you, the pressure gets to you, whatever. Um, but then, like, it, it's frustrating because maybe, you know, maybe there's something to be said for that for life in general. Maybe the videos where I'm really trying and I'm really trying to be analytical and I'm really trying to give you this this great content and I'm, I'm really worried about it. Um, maybe those are the videos where we're actually like I'm making worse content because I'm not at ease because I'm not being myself sounding like my mum now telling me how to get a girlfriend but yeah you know what I mean anybody know what I mean anybody have any idea what I'm saying okay let's focus on the game though um but yeah that's just my little takeaway from today is maybe maybe the reason that the things we try harder at don't always go as well is because we tense up and we, we panic and we whatever and, and then we end up not valuing the things that actually come naturally to us. And it, maybe it's a silly cycle that just I go through and none of you do. But maybe some of you do. If we go into this on like a poison jab. I can then revenge kill with Zerud. But it does force some uncomfortable 50-50s. But I have hazards up and he doesn't. This would take a hit later. Nah, but it won't kill. I, I think I have to do this. Um, because if he is Scarf Volcarona. I could potentially lose the end game. Um, whereas this thing being Scarf, I probably don't lose the end game as, as long as I can land my play rough. Touch wood. Um, I don't know. 
let me know what you think down below. Let me know what you think. Let me let me know your thoughts on, on all of my my nonsense. Is he does just make the U-turn play? That's okay. Because the thing is, he's taking rocks. I'm taking U-turn chip, sure. But he's taking rocks. Um, if I stay in here, I don't think I guarantee a KO on anything is the problem. Um, do I need to worry about agility popping off? No. He can't Oko this. He's not booster. If he specs energy balls, I don't know if it two KOs. But he could Thunderbolt. I think this thing gets Thunderbolt, so this could be a Thunderbolt play, but I think we'd be okay because I think we could potentially Aqua Jet and put him in play Ref Rage. Maybe? Maybe not. That might be bold. That might be a bold call, actually. It is four times resisted. But he just sludge, sludge waves. So yeah, we just surf here. And I think we're in a pretty good spot for this end game. Yeah, we just surf. We don't need to Aqua Jet. We don't need to whatever. There shouldn't be a move that he can Oko us with. And I don't think Urshavu... Uh, he's playing that like it's Scarf. Unless it just showed that it was Boots, but I'm pretty sure it took Rock's damage, and I don't think I missed that. He's playing that like it's Scarf. Um, yes. Okay, sweet. That should be game. That The fish is good, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the fish is good. People, people need to, like, respect the fish. It just killed a bear. It killed a Landorus, whatever animal a Landorus is. Mole? Is Landorus a mole? Some sort of sky flying mole? An unclear classification on an Landorus. Can we please have confirmation at Pokedex? Okay. The fish is good, man. He's killed a moth, he's killed a bear, he's killed a mole. Did it kill anything else in this game? Did it kill the Jirachi? It killed, it killed, it killed a, a Christmas tree topper, as, as Katie likes to call it. I'm pretty sure it killed the Jirachi, right? Yeah, with Aqua Jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the fish is good. Can we put some respect on the fish? Like, oh, he hasn't got last respect, it can't swim. Well, fuck your fucking swift swimming, last respects, whatever. It's still good, man. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah. All right, we're into the next round of playoffs. I don't know how this is happening, by the way. Like, I... Shout out to Eric, like, he, he must be just giving me some kind of steroids before games, because this team should not have got us this far. Like, I, I'm a moron that was like, hee hee hee, mono gen 9, because it's a myth, and then I'll pretend it doesn't exist all season, won't that be funny? It's working. It's actually working. I'm not going to do a post-game outro here where I analyse the match back, because there's no analysis needed. Fish is good. That's the verdict. Fish good. Fish good. Gen 9, not real. 